Hi, my name is Keith Cooper of Northlight Images. In this video, I'm going to return again to a topic people, people keep asking me about is when are we getting a replacement for the Canon Pro 1000s? Um, it's been widely expected for many years now. Um, every year people say this is the year they're going to replace it and the, you know, the clock ticks on. Uh, I wrote the original review for this printer, an excellent printer, back in May of 2016. Uh, that's the printer when I first got it. It's sitting on the table that I use, for, often use for printer testing. It's in the same place as I recently tested the Epson P5300, another big printer. And this is back in 2020 when I tested the Canon Pro 300. Distinct similarities between these. And I would suggest that we are not going to see major changes in the uh, actual style of the printer. Um, now, whether we get roll paper or not is a, an interesting question. Do Canon see the need for 17 inch roll paper printer? I would say with the P5300 uh, that I've been recently looked at, and obviously this is the old P5000, 17 inch does have a place with good roll paper feed. Now the uh, 1000 has a vacuum system, much like this one in the 5300, and it does make a distinct difference. It's the, so the 5300 is appreciably better in paper handling than the, the, the P900 from Epson. But back to the Canon ones. What do we know? Well, the, you know, right up front, I have to say I don't know much about this because if I did know anything, I'd have signed an NDA and uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you about it. So this is um, speculation based on the new printers that Canon released a few months ago. I've still not got one here to test, but I hope to do so at some point. That's the X600, so the 2600, 4600, etc. Now, Canon say that they bought out the Pro 2000 um, a while ago, and the Pro 2000 and 2100, and also this 2600, the new one out, all use the same print head. So Canon have a new way of using the print head. I'll come to the inks and all the differences that makes in a bit. Um, but just as a quick aside, um, from a channel point of view, I've had Quite a few people say, Keith, why don't you do collaborations and various bits on with other channels and things like that? And I'll be brutally honest with you is I don't know anything about this. Video is still a bit new to me. So if any of you have experience in stuff like this and you have any suggestions as to what I ought to do to expand the coverage of the channel, please do let me know. Uh, contact me directly at Northlight um, if you like. I'm happy to sort of, you know, share some expertise with people. Lots of stuff on printers. Oh, and tilt shift lenses. Did I mention my book I wrote about them? Yes, I did probably many times. But anyway, back to the printers. What does the 2600 and the ink set tell us about it? It's, you have to try and separate some of the marketing materials from reality. Uh, now that's not to say the marketing materials are out and out wrong, but they do put a certain spin or gloss on things. And uh, be very careful in reading marketing materials for new printers or any data about new printers because it's written by the marketing department. And they are showing you what they want to show you over here. This is what they are talking about, not what's going on elsewhere. It's it, all marketing works like this for you know, for stuff like this. So always take it yeah with a, a bit of a pinch of salt. Now the print head for the 600 range is the same basic print head as you've got in the 1000. Okay, fair enough. But it has lots of additional sensors built into it, a whole new way of front, so that it doesn't need, for example, calibration when you set it up. Now, there are some complexities about this, which, which I will cover when I have a look at a proper review of the 2600 or 4600, or whatever I can get a look at. But essentially, the calibration has changed, and that's because the improved sensors associated with the print head. The print head itself is the same. It's just the setup of it. There's quite a few aspects of that. Now, you don't need to calibrate it. Well, that's great. I don't think that's a big problem for many people using these printers anyway. It's more for the, you know, the larger print stuff. But it does influence the distribution of profiles and media settings and things like that. And that's 
potentially a slight difference you might have to think about. Now, the inks themselves, they say all new inks. Uh, well, the matte black was first in another printer, but it's new to this line of printers. So we can expect, I'm fairly certain, for the Pro 1000, can I call it a Pro 1600? Mm, probably not yet. Maybe, I don't know. So I'm expecting to see these all new inks. They have, according to Canon, and once again, this is marketing materials, they have massively improved the lifetime of the, uh, the potential lifetime of prints. So on a Canon, one particular Canon paper that was tested, because of the improved yellow ink mainly, and yellow is always the weakest in printers like this in terms of longevity, because of the improved yellow ink, the estimated lifetime has gone up from 75 years to 200 years. Now, from my own personal point of view, having just turned 64, um, 75 year lifetime for my prints is perfectly good. 200 years, well, there you go. Um, I will use that in my marketing materials if it's relevant to it. Um, just bear in mind that there are lots of caveats and various things associated with any of these sort of numbers you see. So, oh, one other bit on it. Uh, the new ink sets, they include a small amount of a waxy substance which apparently sets on the prints. Now from initial testing that I've heard people doing it makes a relatively small difference and somebody said to me a couple of years ago if you've got problems with scratches on your prints it's either because you're using the wrong paper for the printer or you're just out and out clumsy. Handle your prints with care you don't get scratches anyway. Um, perhaps in commercial use it's possible we may see some, uh, you, you, it may be better. Treat any numbers you see with due care because there is no such thing as an established testing me methodology for scratch resistance. I suppose I could do this on a print with my fingernails, but it's hardly reproducible and it's hardly scientific. Uh, we're much more in the realms of marketing here. So there you have it, um, nothing great new to announce. Uh, it looks like Canon are gearing up for announcements for uh, some of their cameras. So we may well see the R5 Mark II. We might even see the R1 appear at some point. And it's quite possible they may want to tie this in with some printing or something like that. But until then, if you want a printer and you need a printer and you can afford a printer, buy a printer now. Uh, waiting around for a printer to appear at some arbitrary point in the future could well leave you waiting for quite a long time. I've got a side bet on there being no new printers this year whatsoever. Um, I might be wrong. Who knows? Uh, I don't know of any yet. Anyway, if you've got any specific questions, please do let me know. Um, it's what gives me ideas. People keep saying, you know, when's the new Pro 1000 coming out? Well, yeah, sometime, yes. Uh, will it have roll paper? Oh, yes, it might well do, but then again, it might not. There you go, and that's about it. So thanks for watching. And as I mentioned, if you've got any suggestions for the channel in terms of collaborations, etc., cetera, et cetera, you know, stuff like that. Um, I, I suppose somebody described it as sort of classic youtube -y type stuff. Uh, let me know, because uh, this is not my natural medium at all. I'm, I'm still a photographer first. I'm a writer second. And video making comes well down the list, somewhere um, around my cooking and piano playing. But uh, thanks for watching and bye.